Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will be discussing the impact of sea level changes on the coastal environment. Sea level may be defined as the position of the interface between the atmosphere and the ocean surface at any given location. It is the base level to which terrestrial elevation and submarine depths are referred. Over time, the relative sea level may change either due to variations in the sea surface or due to vertical land movements. Eustatic sea level changes are global sea level changes related either to changes in the volume of glacial ice on land, thermal expansion of the sea, or to changes in the shape of the seafloor caused by plate tectonic processes. Eustatic sea level change may result from climate change. Over long periods of time, the climates of the world may experience changes. At the beginning of an ice age, temperatures fall and water is frozen and stored as glaciers and ice sheets on the land. This prevents water on the surface from flowing into the sea, which results in a fall in the sea level. At the end of the ice age, temperatures rise once more so that the ice sheets melt and water begins to flow into the sea once more, causing sea level to rise. The global increase in temperatures also cause sea level to rise by thermal expansion. Eustatic sea level change may also result from tectonic processes. The Earth's oceans were not always in their current shape and configuration. Tectonic processes influence the size of ocean basins and in turn impact sea levels. For example, rifting of tectonic plates at divergent plate boundaries may increase the size of the ocean basin and therefore cause the sea level to fall. Isostatic sea level changes are local changes caused by subsidence or uplift of the crust. This may either be the result of changes in the weight of the ice sheets on the land or to growth of mountains or erosion of mountains. An example of isostatic sea level change resulting from climatic conditions is when large ice sheets covering the land during the Ice Age causes the land to sink down because of the weight of the ice sheets. At the end of the Ice Age, temperatures rise once more and the ice sheets melt. This causes the weight on the land to decrease so that the land begins to rise once more. This is called isostatic readjustment or rebound. Since isostatic change occurs much more slowly than eustatic change, we are still experiencing isostatic rebound from the last ice age. Isostatic change also results from plate tectonics. For example, 
at convergent plate margins, sediments at the edge of continental plates are compressed and pushed upwards to create fold mountains. Thus, the land is uplifted in the process. Denudation or the lowering of the land due to erosion, weathering, and mass wasting may also decrease the weight on the land. This causes material from the lower crust and or upper mantle to be pulled upwards. This is another example of isostatic rebound and is similar to the Earth's response following the removal of large glacial ice sheets. Now, a number of landforms are created as a result of sea level changes. These can be broadly grouped into submergent and emergent landforms. Submergent landforms are created when eustatic rise in sea level takes place faster than the isostatic rebound. The water starts to flood the land and fill up any available space. One such feature is a rear, as shown in the photo. A rear is a river valley which has been flooded by the eustatic rise in sea level. They are similar to typical river valleys, but have even more water in them. The profile of a rear is similar to that of the profile of the lower course of a river. Another submergent landform is a fjord. These are steeper and deeper variants of rills that are relatively narrow for their size. They have a U-shaped cross profile and are often found in the cold regions of the world. A glacial trough is created along the path over which glaciers plunge down from highlands. Due to the greater intensity of ice erosion, glacial troughs are deep for distances. However, glacial troughs have a shallow mouth, which marks the point where glacier deposit its load. This is known as a threshold. Due to the rise in sea levels, the glacial trough become, becomes flooded with water to create a fjord. The profile of a fjord shows a deep section as well as a shallow section near the mouth which is the threshold. Another example of a feature formed when eustatic sea level rise exceeds isostatic rebound is a Dalmatian coastline. This is a series of islands separated by narrow sea channels parallel to the coast. The best example of this feature is the Dalmatian coast of Croatia on the Adriatic Sea, shown in this photo. 
A Dalmatian coast forms along a concordant coastline produced by the geological structure of folds parallel to the coast. Tectonic forces produced by the collision of plates compress rocks to create upfold ridges called anticlines and downfolded valleys called synclines. These are aligned parallel to the coast. Sea level rise overtops the low points of the anticlines and flood the synclines. This produces lines of narrow islands parallel to the coast formed by the projecting sections of the anticlines. The profile of a Dalmatian coast reflects the rises of the anticlines, which now form the islands and alternating synclines between them, which now form the narrow sea channels. Now let's look at emergent landforms. Emergent landforms are created towards the end of an ice age and occur when isostatic rebound takes place faster than eustatic rise in sea level. In other words, they form when the land's height rises faster than the sea surface rises. As the land rises relative to the sea, Land that was once under the sea will now become exposed at the surface, while land which was already exposed rises to higher elevations. The uplift of part of the continental shelf produces a smooth, gently sloping coastal lowland. This often contains depositional features such as beaches and spit. These features are still subjected to coastal erosion. Raised beaches are wave cut platforms and beaches that are above the current sea level. They are usually associated with old cliffs, also called relic cliffs, with wave cut notches, arches, stacks along them. These emergent features no longer experience coastal erosion, but are still subjected to processes of denudation. Okay, so as I close this video, I am leaving you with a uh, past paper question on the topic and this is from the 2014 Cape Geography Paper 2. The question says discuss how rising and falling sea levels shape the formation of coastal features. In your response refer to the formation of two features of submergent coastlines and two features of emergent coastlines. All right, and this is for 12 marks. So since we're looking at four features in general, you're expected to 
uh, get maximum six marks for talking about the submergent features and six marks for talking about the emergent features, which means that each feature that you talk about, you're trying to earn three marks. All right. Since the emphasis is on the rising and falling of the sea levels, it is important for you to, to show how these features are the result of sea level, either rise or fall. But when you talk about the submergent features, for example, which are the result of sea level rise, it is important for you to make a distinction between them. For example, um, even though the Rhea and the Fjord, as well as the Dalmatian coast, are all the result of sea level rise, what makes them different? All right. So try to show that. And where you can, it is also good if you could give examples of these features. The same thing for the emergent features. You could, for example, when you're talking about the emergent features, you could talk about um, those features that are still exposed to the sea, like the lowland features, or you could talk about the features that are no longer affected by the sea. All right, like the raised beach and the relic cliffs. Okay, so I would encourage you to go ahead and just get some practice in answering this question. Okay, so once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to support my channel by giving me a like, sharing it with a friend, and subscribe if you have not done so.